Welcome back to Harbaugh. Mike Huckabee is the former governor of Arkansas. He's running second in the latest Iowa polls. He's doing very well out there, according to uh, that poll that went out from the New York Times. Let me ask Governor Huckabee, thank you for joining us. You're in Florida, sir. Is that correct? That's correct. Happy to be with Let you again, Chris. Did you, did you get the latest news from, uh, from the uh, public affairs publishing company that Scott McClellan, who was a longtime spokesman for the president, says that the president, the vice president, the chief of staff, well, let me read you his words, the most powerful leader in the world, had called upon me to speak on his behalf and help restore credibility, the credibility he lost amid the failure to find weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. So I stood at the White House briefing room podium in front of the glare of the Klieg lights for the better part of two weeks and publicly exonerated two of the senior most aides in the White House. Carl Rove and Scooter Libby. Quote, there was a problem. It was not true. I had unknowingly passed along false information, and five of the highest ranking officials in the administration were involved in my doing so. Rove, Libby, the vice president, the president's chief of staff, and the president himself. What's your reaction to that statement? Well, I'm just hearing it uh, this afternoon for the first time. It's, it's uh, stunning. It's one of those moments where I'm very glad uh, that I'm not a Washington insider. It would not be a good time to have a Washington address. Do you think this smacks of the problem of cover-up and sleaze and uh, underhanded behavior when even the president is apparently, according to his spokesman, party to a cover-up, willingly or not, wittingly or not, putting out false information and then commuting the sins of the person who shared in that party line, which was to deny any criminality? Well, Chris, I mean, in other words, Scott, Scott was told to do something. Scooter did it. Yeah. I mean, it, it's fairly parallel here. Well, they're serious allegations, but we don't know yet whether they're true. Uh, Scott's not saying this under oath. It's not being denied under oath. I have a feeling that before it's all finished through the wash, that's what's going to happen. But uh, these are serious allegations. They deserve to be thoroughly uh, examined, investigated, and the truth brought to the American people. Do you think the American people deserve a statement from the president in this regard, personally? Oh, I think he, he'll have to respond to it because uh, the closeness and uh, the fact that Scott McClellan was one of his most trusted aides and in the position of press secretary. Had this yeah. been somebody very distant in the food chain, uh, he could have ignored it. But you can't ignore it when someone as close to the president as a press secretary makes that kind of allegation. Let me ask you about your appeal. You must know when you travel around. I mean, when you come here, everybody seems to like you. You seem to have a, an appeal to the American people right now, Governor, that wasn't expected when we first looked at the uh, shape of this field. Can you explain it? Well, th there's a big, long line of people who don't like me that much, too. They're throwing all sorts of stuff. But uh, I, I think what people sense in me is that I'm not a candidate who's the uh, sort of culmination of a room full of consultants. Uh, I pretty well say what's on my mind, and I'm going to say it the same way tomorrow that I said it yesterday. I think people find that refreshing. I know what I believe. I'm comfortable in that. If the people reject me in those beliefs, I can live with that. I, I couldn't live with changing my view every day to come up with one other way to try to sell the voters on something that I don't even believe myself. And I think if there's anything that the American people are looking for in leadership, it's not that they have to agree with me on every issue, because they won't. But they'd like for me to agree with myself that I would approach this with convictions, with a sense of, of clarity. And I do right. believe that whether a person is a Republican or Democrat, they're looking for that. You seem to be a conservative fundamentalist. I don't mean that in a religious sense, although I know you are, but a fundamentalist about the, the Constitution as written, uh, the uh, original intent on the Second Amendment, you seem mm -hmm. to be a person who's very comfortable with a hard and fast position on a lot of conservative uh, of truths. Is that the best way to look at you? I, I'd like to think that. Of course, you know, then I get attacked for being uh, a pro-life liberal by one of the other candidates. So it, it's really one of those um, uh, issues, Chris, where I think labels sometimes become so simplistic. I, I'm a conservative. I think I'm an independent conservative. I'm not a wholly owned subsidiary of Wall Street. I challenge my own party to talk more about hunger and poverty and about the environment because I think we ought to be giving leadership on issues like that as well as education and, and health care reform. And, and I feel like we have uh, allowed maybe the Democrats to to own those issues, and they shouldn't. Uh, frankly, the American people ought to own those issues. It shouldn't be left, right, liberal, conservative issues. It ought to be vertical, up-down issues. And what 
I'm sensing people are wanting more than anything else, more than a Democrat or Republican. They want someone who says, if I'm elected president, I'll manage the crises, I'll manage the government, and we'll fix some of these problems by not uh, trying to make it all a Republican solution. Now, I don't think that detracts from my being a conservative. No. I think it uh, perhaps means that I've been a governor and I've had to actually balance a budget and make things work. You know, it sounds like, uh, and I mean this with respect, it sounds like you're a bit of Martin Luther. You're a, a here I stand kind of guy. That's a compliment to me. I, oh, Martin sure Luther's is. One of I, my I mean it that theological way. Theological heroes. And I as a Baptist, it that you way, know, but it seems like you're almost a, a, a no. It's a you're leading a reform of the conservative movement. It seems to me it's a little deeper than just a personality change. It looks to me like you want to reform the conservative movement, purify it. I don't have any illusions that I'm, you know, the great white hope of the conservative movement, but I do think that, for example, true conservatives ought to be conservationist. True conservatives ought to do that which will preserve and conserve the best of our children and the next generation. We ought to bring the kind of reforms to health care that actually in the long term will cost less money than what we're doing now, which is intervening at the last moment of catastrophic disease. Yeah. There are some things that we can do that could radically change this country's future. And if we don't do it, Chris, and if all we do is just sit and argue about who's winning, Democrats or Republicans, it's our grandchildren that ultimately are gonna pay the price for that. Okay, thank you very much, Governor Mike Huckabee, who's making a big challenge for that Iowa caucus on uh, January 3rd. Up next